Hello, we are going to look at two examples, basic examples to get us start, uh, started on particles moving around in the magnetic field and how they, you know, what kind of motion they have. So this first one is FM17P42Q8. State what is meant by a magnetic field. Ah, good old definition. A region of space where a magnetic pole or something experiences a force. So you can say where a magnetic pole some mark scheme you notice they will say not just magnetic pole but they will say a moving charge so other ways you could talk about this is moving charge uh, what else current carrying conductor like what we have looked at a lot in the past sections so current carrying conductor all these will experience a force so where uh, any of these experiences a force or you want to be specific you can say a magnetic force can also. This one, there's two marks. One is for, if you talk about region of space, that's one, uh, where there's a force. Okay, A space where there's force, but force on what? So any of these, moving charge, force on current, current, current carrying conductor or magnetic pole also can. Okay, that's the first one, def defining a magnetic field. Now we come to our fun part. Okay, so you have a particle coming into a field, okay, in vacuum. Particle angles at, at enters at right angle into the uniform field. Is it into the page or out of the page? Uh, we don't know. But based on the curve of the particle, I know it will either be into the page or out of the page. Don't know which one. Hmm, maybe you can figure it out later when we try to see using our left hand rule. But okay, never mind. We know it's some either one of those. The particle enter, then leave the field uh after a half circle, semicircle, state the direction of the magnetic field. Oh, you see, now we have to find out which is the magnetic field. Now. Okay, so we need to do some finger exercise. So how to start up? Uh? Well, if you see it's a charged particle, it's a positively charged particle. So very good, we don't have to worry too much about negative charge. And it's moving in. So you have to somehow align your middle finger such that your middle finger is pointing this way. Wow, this pen very fat. Okay. Align middle finger. And you see how the particle curves to the right? That means there will be some kind of force at uh, at the point when it enters the field here. A force will be pushing it to the right. This is F. And that should be where your thumb should be pointing. So can you uh, adjust your hand a bit to see where the magnetic field will be, so your pointing finger, where will your pointing finger be pointing? That is what you want to try. So you're going to twist your hand a bit, thumb to the right, middle finger up. Wow, how to twist, ooh. So you have to twist your hand in such a way that you realize that the magnetic field is actually out of the page. So out of page, and that will be B. So I can put dots everywhere lah. Okay, to tell myself that it is out of the page. I'm going to space out the dots a little bit. Okay. Um, so when you use your hand on the paper or on the screen that like you're doing now, your, you should be pointing to yourself lah, with your pointing finger. This is your pointing finger. You should be pointing to yourself. And your middle finger should be sticking upwards. Okay, so that's how you can tell whether it's out of the page or into the page. Let's see. Okay, let's write the answer. Direction of magnetic field, you can either say out of page, out of paper, whatever that is, also can. La. So out of page. B1. It's a good finger exercise to try to figure out where is B. Explain why the speed of the particle is not affected by the magnetic field. Oh, this is a throwback to circular motion, guys. What does it mean by speed of particle? You see, uh, at every point along this... Um, what you call this circular path, there will be a tangential velocity. At the beginning, particle is velocity here. And then here, maybe the particle has a velocity in this direction. Particle velocity here, particle has velocity here. But throughout the whole thing, speed is unchanged. But there's a force acting on it. How come the speed is unchanged? Ah, that's why you gotta remember your kinematics a little bit. You see, a particle will only get faster and faster if there is a force with a component in the same direction or in the, well, opposite direction 
to that velocity. Then there will be acceleration. No? The particle can either get faster and faster or slow down. But if you look at this particular scenario, no matter where the particle is, force is always perpendicular to V. So whether it's there or maybe here, hmm, also perpendicular, here, also perpendicular. Ah, yeah, my arrows is a bit out of shape, lah, but you get the idea. And this force is not going to affect V because there is no component of F that is parallel to V. Like this one here. Ah, this one got component, right? V and F. Ah, then got acceleration, no? it will speed up slower. But now it's not circular motion. So just stay at a constant speed. So we need to describe this in a sentence. So we come down here. How to explain? Ah? You can say force is always... That's the nature of circular motion and your left hand rule. Force is always perpendicular to the velocity or some, some you may say is always perpendicular to the direction of motion also can. So, so what? So there'll be no acceleration in a very specific direction in the direction of velocity. Okay, so these two main ideas, this is the B1 and B1 mark. Okay, explain means you must say why lah. Why, 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 why particle not affected by magnetic field? Because magnetic force, oh, forgot to put the magnetic force. Magnetic force, always perpendicular. So no acceleration in direction of velocity. Okay, in other words, A is always perpendicular to V lah. Miss, where's the A? Ah, nah, you see ah. If there is a... Acceleration in direction of velocity, then you should have some acceleration this way. No more. Don't have. All the acceleration is only this way, towards the center. So it's not gonna, it's perpendicular to V, so no change in speed. Okay, if you have something like that, acceleration upwards. Perpendicular? Sorry, cannot. No change in that speed, speed uh, of the particle. Alright, that's the first one. Show that the diameter of the semicircular path is given by this expression. So this particle come in, zoop, goes out. How do you prove this equation? Well, if you're not sure where to start, every time you give a proof and you see circular motion, good chance is you got to think about how, what force is providing the circular motion. What force provides centripetal force? So here, you look what is the force pointing to the center of this path? Magnetic force. So you can say, magnetic force provides the centripetal force. That is Fc equals Fb. La. And you can say, oh, Fb is going to be Vqv sine theta. V is the, 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 the speed of the particle. Then Fc, you want to use what? Ah, mv squared over R. Ah, I have to remember, read chapter 7, because it will come back a lot here. So we need to rearrange, oh, diameter. Oh. Maybe rearrange to find radius. So you have, uh, divide both sides by V. So this V is gone. So I will only have R equals to MV over BQ. Sine theta, what happened? Ah? You see the velocity? No matter where you are, you are always perpendicular to the, the, the magnetic field. Magnetic field is out of pitch. So okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Always perpendicular. So that's gone. Sine 90 equals to 1. They forgot to write 90. Okay. But we're not done. We need to find diameter. So diameter is 2 times of the radius. So hence, 2mv over bq. That's how you can prove. In exam, if you see this and you get stuck, don't worry about it. You just take this equation and continue on to the next part. Lah. Okay. So two marks. One is if you knew how to equate magnetic force and the centripetal force equation expression and then you substitute and find your final diameter that will be accuracy mark okay let's go continue okay now what use the expression whoa, that you just derived to show that the time spent in the field by the particle is independent of a speed v wow what does it mean now huh? let's calm down and see if we can come up with the equation for time spent in the field so we know the time that the particle is going to go like this. Inside the field. You start here, you go in, you come out. How do you find the time? Ah? Do we know the distance? The, the distance travel? Oh, we do know. Oh, 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 Ken. 
Remember, there's no acceleration, right? Just now we say. So no, uh, well, no, no, no acceleration. The speed is constant. Okay, so whatever this speed is, lah, it's going to be the same throughout until you exceed. Which means we can use our good old equation where we say, huh, speed equals to distance traveled over time taken. Because there's no acceleration or no change in speed, so we don't have to use our Stuva equation. We just stick with this basic one. So that means you can find time TF. So T. Why they use big T? I also don't know. Leh. Sure, let's use big T. That will be a distance over speed. So let's see if we can sub in all the information that we know here. How? What's the distance traveled? What's the length of this? arc, this semicircle. So you can say the distance traveled would be hmm, half a perimeter of a circle. So that will be pi d, but half, so over 2. Pi r, 2 pi r, pi d, pi d over 2. Okay, so that means you would have traveled a total distance, the whole arc is pi d over 2. So let's write here. Pi d over 2. Speed, leh. what's the speed? V, ah. okay, lah, we just say V first. So then we will have this thing. Mm, half pi D to V. You know why so ugly one? Okay, so sorry. Pi D over 2V. Let's look. That, that, that looks much nicer. Pi D to V. Mm. Um, but we are not done yet. We want to show... That the how much time is spent inside the field does not depend on the speed v. But we got a v in our equation, then we need to get rid of it. So what we could do is we haven't used the expression that we proved just now. So let's try sub that in for d. So now we have pi to v. Sub in d, what's the d just now? Ah, ah d in the previous part, 2mv over bq. Hmm, you see something nice? The v's cancel out. So all that we have left is... 2, mm, 2 also cancel out, eh? No 2. Pi left. So, okay, pi m, because the v's cancel out, over bq. And this is the time this particle will spend inside the field. Ah, so we can conclude. We say, okay, so t does not depend on the speed. That it comes in with. Wow, isn't that interesting? How much time the particle spends in the field does not depend on the speed. Hmm. Because, you know, magic, no lah, maths. So that is how you can prove that uh, time is independent of speed. Two marks here, one for... If you know, you remember your old equation and you sub in, you know, speed distance over time. That one is a C1 mark. And if you remember to sub in this thing, to get rid of V in the equation, then that's your final mark. A1 mark. Wow, I have to practice a bit, uh, playing around with the equations. But yeah, that's the first question that we will look at today.